Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your trusted weather source here with an important critical update on what could potentially be an historic storm. We're talking starting off with wildfires in Texas, a blizzard in the high plains, and a severe weather outbreak in the form of tornadoes stretching from the Midwest into the Deep South. We have a lot to give you on this update. Now, before we get going into that, if you're not a subscriber, very important, please hit that subscribe button in that lower right-hand corner. And if you appreciate this report, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up down below. It does help with the algorithm. With that said, let's go over to the weather wall and get this thing started. So we're going to begin this update by looking at the current watches and warnings. We're going to be specifically looking at Texas here. We have the red flag warnings in this color region right here through Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, and into Kansas. You've got some high wind warnings already up there across the panhandle. And we've had a very dry winter here for this part of Texas for sure. So we got a lot of tender vegetation out there. And with this intense area of low pressure moving on in, the winds are really going to begin to howl. And I'm afraid we're going to see images like these really be very prevalent here across portions of the South Central Plains. Now, what's causing this? What's causing this is a very intense area of low pressure that's emerging out of Colorado and into Kansas. This is about two o'clock in the afternoon on your Friday, still showing it at a 974 millibar low. That is equivalent to a category two hurricane. So we're gonna see some very, very strong winds here across Texas because of the very tight pressure gradient in this region. So we're talking winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. We're talking winds like this, uh, covering a very large portion of the area right here, non-thunderstorm related, just strict gusty winds because of this intense low pressure as it moves up there toward the north. Now, the other component of this, of course, is going to be the severe component. We're going to have some severe weather beginning today, and it's going to last for the next five days. So let's go take a look at the latest from the Storms Prediction Center. Well, I got to tell you, folks, the, uh, our friends at the Storms Prediction Center out of Oklahoma City, they're going to be uh, pretty busy here over the next five days. We've got our initial system. We can call this the warm-up right now uh, here on your day one outlook and it's the storm that's coming in on Friday going through the weekend. That's the one where things are really going to get humming, uh, that's for sure. So for today, we are tracking this upper level low that's tracking in through portions of Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. You've seen that slight risk right in there, surrounded with that green marginal risk there. Uh, not overly big, but again, could see a few scattered uh, thunderstorms that could be severe. Now, breaking this down by the category, the trail risk is low, about 2%, but it's there, uh, kind of covering those areas of Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana. The hail threat, uh, that's pretty high. I wouldn't be surprised to see one's one to two inch range uh, for some of this in this area because of the cold core associated with this little upper level low. So uh, watch out for those areas for potential hailers uh, to deal with there. And obviously the wind threat's gonna be about the same. Again, gusts over 55 miles per hour. This will begin to shift off toward the east as we look at your day two. So we're gonna be talking about areas here across Alabama, Georgia, and parts of Mississippi. Uh, again, an isolated severe thunderstorm or two out of this, not out of the question, but I'm not overly concerned about tomorrow. What I am concerned about, obviously, is the, the big storms coming in here on your day three outlook. So your day three right now is showing up to enhance up to level three here. So we're talking about cities of Memphis, St. Louis, Springfield, Evansville, Peoria in that zone and the enhanced area. The slight risk includes Chicago, Indianapolis, Nashville, Louisville, as well as Birmingham. And I'm going to be honest with you, folks, it would not shock me the least if we see this potentially upgraded to a moderate risk as we get closer to it. And my reasoning thinking of this is because of the fact we've got some pretty decent instability and a tremendous amount of wind shear uh, and helicity with this system. Now, as we go ahead and track this through the weekend, and tomorrow we'll be able to break down the categories on this, by the way, once we get to day two. Uh, day three, they don't do that from the Storm Prediction Center, but by tomorrow, we'll be able to break this down for you. So looking out to day four, again, we're going to shift this into the southeast. So we're talking about Metro Atlanta. We're talking about Birmingham, stretching back over toward Jackson, getting down toward Pensacola and Mobile. Those areas will be looking at the enhanced area for severe weather as this shifts from Saturday going into Sunday. And I'm really concerned about Saturday across portions of Alabama, where we could see a potential significant tornado outbreak, especially on that day. This will finally begin to wrap up as it moves up to the east coast there. As we go into your uh, day five outlook, we'll start to see this thing stretch from basically New Jersey all the way down here toward the Georgia and Florida area as we watch that storm system begin to exit off the eastern seaboard. So again, the next five days are going to be quite busy for the folks at the Storms Prediction Center. And uh, so let's go ahead and break this down, look at the models and see what they're showing as far as the timing of when you can expect some of the severe weather to move through your areas. 
So we're first going to take a look at how this storm system emerges, the big one that's going to be coming in for this upcoming weekend, okay? I've got the NAM up right now. I want to show the winds once again here across Texas, okay? Notice here on your Thursday morning, it's not bad. We're seeing very, very light winds here across North Texas and really not looking that bad. But look how quickly it deteriorates and goes downhill as we go into your Friday. As that low begins to pull out of Colorado and into uh, portions of Kansas, it's, it really gets very, very gusty, very, very windy. Uh, seeing a couple of wind gusts in here, 65. Here's a 56. Here's a 60 getting over to the Dallas area. So we're talking about some very, very gusty winds uh, with this system. As we got that low that's going to be sitting up in this direction. So again, you're going to get a westerly wind as again, you get that counterclockwise flow around an area of low pressure. So it's going to be very, very gusty winds. We could see something on the far on the scale of what they had last year with the wildfires potentially in this area because of those very, very strong gusty winds throughout the day on your Friday. Now, we're going to go ahead and look at right now the, the what's going to happen with this immediate st storm system going in for today and going into tomorrow. Here's our little piece of energy here across Texas that's going to be responsible. And this little upper level feature here uh, kind of dragging across the panhandle uh, that's going to be moving off toward the east. So this system is going to be sliding out across Oklahoma and in across Arkansas. So it's going to be a late night event the way this is going to look out with those thunderstorms. And this is going to shift right into the southeast. All right. And it's going to be a quick mover. Again, not overly concerned about this one. But the one behind it, boy, it is a really, really it does mean business. Look what happens as we get toward Friday afternoon. You got this very strong area of low pressure here. You have a very strong uh, wind flow through here. It's divergent, which means we've got a lot of wind shear with this. And we're going to we're going to trap some instability out ahead of this system as well as this begins to push off toward the east. So this will be shifting off toward the east. And then we got another jet of energy here that's coming around the bottom of this trough as this goes into Saturday night and Sunday here coming in across the deep south. So uh, that's very concerning. I'm, I'm really concerned about Alabama uh, as far as potential tornado about Mississippi, Alabama. That's really catching my eye here uh, for this upcoming weekend. So as this pushes on off, uh, we'll see things begin to improve as that trough goes off. But don't let your guard down, folks. The weather pattern still is looking very busy as this one goes by. All right, we got another system. This one comes on out. Again, this one's not nearly as strong as the one we're going to see this weekend. But again, another area of low pressure, a very strong jet flow here coming in here. And we're just into that time of year. We're going to have a parade of these storm systems one after another. This one comes on through, and that one exits off. We get a little bit of a break here as we head past the 10 day mark. So as we extrapolate beyond 10 days, so we know we got one toward the middle of next week on top of the one going in this weekend. And then we have another one. Here's another one. You can see it digging right on down here. Once again, heading toward the 24th and 25th. Here's a low. Looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? It's like we're stuck on repeat, rinse and repeat with these systems one after another as this pushes off toward the east there. Again, with some active weather, with severe weather going toward the end of the month. We're talking about the 25th, 26th, 27th. So, uh, again, you're just going to have to keep it tuned here to keep on these updates. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the short-term forecast. Again, this one we're going to watch here for the short-term for like heading into tonight and into tomorrow. This is the energy back here. And, of course, we got the energy out here on the West Coast we have to watch. So, again, watch that timestamp there in the upper right-hand corner as I take you forward in time here. And there it is. It's, again, just a little complex of storms here across Oklahoma, parts of Texas, and Arkansas. Not that robust, but, again, that's coming into tonight and going into tomorrow morning. Uh, for that potential severe weather. And this is going to roll in across Arkansas and Louisiana going to the early morning hours on your Thursday and kind of roll into areas of Alabama where, again, you could see an isolated severe thunderstorm. Not really a big deal here as this pushes off toward the east. But the big boy rolling here on the west coast, this thing really means business here, folks, as this thing gets cranking in here and ejects out into the plains as we're going to see that pressure really start to fall on off as we go into your Friday and we see things begin to deteriorate. All right, so let's go switch over to the European model here. Again, we're going to watch the watch this system as it begins to move on out with that 974. Again, uh, that's where we're, we're not expecting any precipitation with this across Texas, just with extremely windy conditions. Look at these isobars in here. Those are lines of equal pressure. When they're that pack, it's stacked up in there, you know you got a lot of windy conditions with this. Okay, so this is going to move on up. And again, it looks like for this is going to be a late day event going in for these, thun these thunderstorms. They may start initially across portions of Iowa and Missouri, but really kind of going into the nighttime hours, going into Friday and Saturday with this initial round of thunderstorms, that enhanced area we showed you there, uh, stretching from Illinois down toward the Gulf Coast. And then we're going to shift into Saturday. Saturday, again, this will kind of hit, uh, hiccup once again with another little jet streak of energy enhancing those storms going in late in the day on Saturday and into uh, uh, Saturday night. That's going to be very concerning. 
And this is different than the other ones we've had in the past. What we've had recently uh, did not have a lot of instability. Look at the instability here. This is surface cape. This is gasoline, folks. Gas for the fire, okay? So when you see capes up to 3,000, 2,500, that's fuel. On top of this fact, we got some strong storms in here. So we've got plenty of fuel. That is for sure to feed these thunderstorms. And as we track these storms, again, using the K index here, this is kind of your thunderstorm tracking mechanism here. You see this, these thunderstorms really get robust here uh, going into Saturday and Friday. So Friday night, it doesn't look too terribly bad into the morning hours there. And then going into your Saturday, that's when things really get howling there. And again, I'm really concerned about Alabama here, uh, potentially seeing a, a, a significant tornado outbreak. I'm not talking about April 11th type stuff back in uh, April 2011. Not, nothing on that scale, but it does concern me. We may see an outbreak here as this pushes off toward the east. And we see that line of thunderstorms that will kind of track across Alabama and Georgia through the overnight periods there. Again, another nighttime event with thunderstorms. And this moves off the eastern seaboard. And then we see things begin to slowly but surely begin to improve. So going back over here to the uh, uh, European model here, as we kind of track this thing on out, we say goodbye to that system. And then we're going to see the next one come on out. Again, we got this one. This one doesn't look that bad, but again, could see a few thunderstorms in here. I'm thinking marginal sight on this one, the way this is tracking here, heading toward the 20th of March. That's on that particular system. Then once you get beyond 10 day, again, we're kind of extrapolating here, just kind of seeing what the, the trend is here. Because I tell you, the trends did work out pretty well with the big one we're tracking this weekend. That's for sure. And then we got another system here to watch. This one going out to the 25th. You're seeing this one again. You got low pressure here. Uh, got the cold air mass warming up with the warm air mass once again. And that will set up more severe weather there. And then it just kind of slowly presses off toward the east going into the 26th. All right. So again, very active weather pattern staying with us here. Uh, across the country here as we head deeper into the month of March. Let's talk about precipitation totals again. Let me back this up once again for you real quick. As we're looking here in the short term for the next three days, again, a lot of activity out here on the West Coast. A lot of heavy rain as that big storm system uh, makes its presence felt. We got a little rain here, obviously, with the system that we're going to have here across the South for Thursday and into your Friday a little bit as that kind of exits on out. Really Wednesday, Thursday, not Thursday, Friday. So that kind of moves on out. Then we'll see the heavy rains with that system through the weekend across the deep south. And then we got several storm systems behind this. So you can see we're going to fill in a lot of rain here going all the way out to the 340 here across the eastern uh, third of the United States uh, for sure. Wish we could get a little more rain down here across Texas. Uh, obviously, we get the wildfire concerns uh, for this upcoming uh, you know, Friday for sure. And they're just not getting a lot of rain here uh, over the next two weeks. That's going to continue to be the trend. Let's talk about the blizzard component of this. We do have a blizzard part of this. We want to talk about this as well. Looking at the snow totals here as I go and take you on out. Again, going for this upcoming weekend. So as that load begins to track up to the north, uh, we're going to see some pretty uh, decent snows. Not bad. But again, blizzard means like whiteout conditions. It doesn't necessarily mean the depth of the snow, but we're going to have some uh, decent snows falling up here. And this the winds are going to be definitely howling uh, into that area there. So let me go into the central U.S. here, going a little bit closer. And again, we're seeing, you know, six to eight inch snow totals in here. Not bad up here across portions of Minnesota. Uh, that's going to be moving in here uh, with howling winds up to 60 miles per hour. So definitely could still see uh, blizzard conditions here across many portions of uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, at least the extreme eastern portions of it. Uh, but definitely there into Minnesota as that big low begins to track up into that direction. So going ahead and wrapping up this update with the latest from the Climate Prediction Centers. We're looking for the next 10 days here, day 6 through 10, still looking at below normal temperatures out here in the west relatively warm for most of the country, except maybe near normal here across the southeast, probably because of increased chances of rain, that's for sure. And then looking to the 19th to the 25th, still looking at cool pattern in the west, milder temperatures here in the east. Precipitation wise, looking like this, again, very active out here on the west coast, very dry in the area when they need it. And boy, I'm really concerned about those wildfires this, this Friday. We cross our fingers, but I got a bad feeling about that. And then we got some uh, active rainy weather up there into the northeast. Going up in two days, 8 through 14, again, the 19th to the 25th. Again, still looking pretty active with the weather trend here across the country, as we've seen, and still looking dry, unfortunately, across portions of Texas. So we're in store for a very active next a few days here, folks. So uh, we're going to try to keep a watchful eye on this for you guys. Uh, probably going to try to do a little bit of weather coverage here on Friday night if, the, if everything's firing up like it's supposed to, late afternoon Friday into Friday evening. And then, of course, we're going to be watching it very, very intently on Saturday. I am concerned about uh, Alabama, to be honest with you, Mississippi, Alabama area. Uh, with that gender industry, the instability uh, there, it just uh, got me a little concerned. 
Uh, it's still question marks on how big of a potential tornado outbreak we're looking with this storm. It's already historic just in the nature of the sheer pressure uh, being that low. It's definitely, uh, you know, ones you don't see that often here that tracks across the country. So we got wildfires, we've got blizzards, and we've got tornadoes. Got a little bit of everything with this big storm system. At least the ones behind it don't look quite as impressive or as bad as this current one, but hey, it's still early in the season, right? All right, folks, hey, if you want to appreciate reports like this, and if you'd like to be a participant of our live coverage and get those notifications, uh, do me the favor, do me the honor, do me the pleasure. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And if you appreciate what you see, if you got a comment, got any feedback, please post that down below as well. It'd be, I, I do respond to people's questions and things like that. All right, that's y'all's update for now. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next update. Till then, y'all be good. Have a great day. Bye, guys.